These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Let's start with this one. Table two. We, uh, go through this together. So we want to start by just writing the general form of the rate expression. What would the general form of this rate expression be? Well, we say that we have a rate. Then there's going to be a rate constant. Uh, what then? Then it's the reactant. Concentration of one of the reactants. To some power. concentration of another reactant to some power. So this would be the general form of the rate expression. Now notice that I put in x and y for the exponents because we don't know what the exponents are yet. We can't assume that these exponents are the same as the stoichiometric coefficients from the equation. There's no necessary reason for those to be the same. So we have to put these in as unknowns. And we don't know this rate constant either. OK, so now we have to go through the data. Um, so the way uh, that, uh, so we have here uh, experiment one, which is wait, one molar, well, so the, w the way to um, work through this is we need to pick a pair of trials where one of the concentrations is constant. So what would be a good pair of trials here? The first and the second. Yeah, so let's deal with that. Uh, okay, so um, so let's start by say dealing with uh, experiment two. So for experiment two, what should I write down for the rate? Um, two point two four seven four four seven. Good. What should I write down for k? Well, k is an unknown. We don't know that. What should I write down for the ammonium? to the x power, because we don't know what that power is going to be. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just plugging in to our general rate expression. I'm plugging in the data from the table into our general rate expression. And then for NO2 minus, we're looking at experiment two. So for experiment two, I would plug in a 0.1 to the y over here as well. All right, now I'm going to plug in for experiment one. Well, experiment one is 1.35 times 10 to the negative 7 equals k times 0.1 to the x times 0 0.005 to the y. You've got to be careful to make sure we're getting the right numbers of decimal places uh, here. Do you, does your book have different data? Yeah. No. Well, oh, sorry. It's 0 0.01. I'm sorry. I started by doing experiment 2. And then the second time, I was plugging in the data for experiment one. I think I did put in the right data for experiment one, or did I get confused? Um, mm -hmm. So um, which experiment are you looking at? Two. Yeah, well, we started with experiment two. Right. Um, so that was this line here, right? Uh -huh. So I think I've got experiment two correct, which my number seems wrong. Well, I'm just confused because here it's showing an NO, and here it's saying NH. That's got to be a mistake in the book. Oh, okay, <laughs> I see. And yes. then it's, it's showing this similarity as 0 0.010, not the same as this for initial. Right, right. Okay, so that's partly the book 
messed up and partly I messed up. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay, like, so I'm glad you caught that. So yeah, you can see from the equation that it's supposed to be NO2 minus. Yeah. So you might just uh, write in your book that that's a mistake. That's not supposed to be NH2, it's supposed to be NO2. Right. Ooh, they got that better in the older edition. They messed it up in the new edition. <laughs> All right, and then I read the line wrong. This is supposed to be 0 0.01, and I wrote it as just 0.1. Okay, so that's just the setup for the experiment two, and then under it's just the setup for the experiment one. If I got that one right, yeah. So does this look right for experiment one? I think so. Yeah, okay. Okay, now by the way, let's go over a little bit of math that we're going to need here. Let's say that you have x over y to the z power. Can you think of any way to rewrite that? x to the z, y to the z? x to the z over y to the z. All right, so that's a little bit of algebra that we're going to need for these types of problems. We have to know that these are two ways of writing the same thing. Okay, so these are two ways of writing the same thing. Uh, what do we do now? Um, we can cancel. Uh, let's oh, see. So we the next. Uh, yeah, it's legal to divide one equation by another equation. I kind of set myself up, so it's going to be easy to do that. So I'm going to divide the left-hand sides of the equations and the right-hand sides of the equations. Divide one into the other. So let's take out our calculators to see what our new values would be. Let's go over how to do that in your calculator. Now, we have to do 2.7 times 10 to the negative 7. And the way you're doing that is 2.7 multiplied times 10 to the negative 7. That is not the best way to do uh, scientific notation on your calculator. The best way to do scientific notation, I'm sorry? Should I use the E? Yeah, is to use the E key. The calculator just likes that better. So you'd have to. Uh, Okay. <laughs> now, in fact, I noticed that the second time you used parentheses, which is fine. Then, um, but the point is, when you use the E key, you don't need those parentheses. Oh. That's why the calculator likes it better, because the calculator treats this as two different things. So you need parentheses to put them, to put them together, but the calculator treats this as a single number. So you don't need parentheses when you're working with this. I just did the parentheses one. That's why. And you got two as well. Okay, that's fine. All right, so um, if, you're, uh, if you're using this form, you have to use parentheses. This is better because you don't need the parentheses. The calculator treats that like a single number. So let's see, on my calculator, that E is above the comma. Is that uh, Yeah. So if you hit second and then the comma, you get this little scientific notation. Or we could have just canceled the 10 to the negative 7s on our own. And then we could do 2.7 over 1.35. So that comes out to be 2. Um, now the Ks will cancel. This term will also cancel. Now here's the real cleverness, cleverness of the method. This is why we wanted to pick two rows where one of the concentrations was constant. Because otherwise this would be tough to deal with because we don't know what x is. And what are we going to have here? We have 0 0.01 to the y divided by 0 0.005 to the y. Now what's another way that we can rewrite the right hand side of this equation? That's that little algebra trick that we were talking about over here. We can rewrite it like this. Well, this is uh, easier to evaluate. Now we can do this uh, calculation on our calculator. And what do we get from that? Two. That's right. So now what? That's right. Now we just do trial and error until we pick a value for y that makes this equation work. Um, well, usually the only numbers you're going to really be trying are 1 and 2, maybe 0. 0, 1, and 2. The only numbers you're really going to have to try are 0, 1, and 2. Well, 2 to the first power really is 2. So we know that y is going to be 2 in this case. Um, so now we have a new updated version of our rate expression for y. We can 
put in the number one. Okay, and this is basically the method your instructor was doing, but instead of writing these out, she was kind of doing this in her head. She was saying that uh, this number is twice as big as this, and this number is twice as big as this, the exponent has to be one. That's much clearer if we write it out on paper. 